Toast Bites Chomp. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Toast Bites, where we take a look at some of the awesome indie games I've played that didn't get a standalone video on my channel. As always, a link to each game is in the description, and if you're on a supported device or using the YouTube app, you can check out more episodes of Toast Bites by clicking the card icon above. Let's get into it! Number 1 this will be a longer episode since I have quite a few games I want to show, but none of the main games I'm featuring require that much explanation. They don't rely on a ton of intricate mechanics, just a few brilliant ones. Kicking things off, Inked is a gorgeously hand-drawn puzzle platformer where you travel through a sprawling world cleverly laid out on paper. You play as the nameless hero set out on an adventure to find his lost love, and the only tool you have at your disposal is a fountain pen. The mechanics are simple. You learn geometric shapes that you can then place in the environment to solve puzzles and progress. And the puzzles range from typical pressure plate switches and environmental manipulation to more cerebral physics puzzles and even action-oriented fare. There's a lot of variety there, but it all fits seamlessly within the flow of the story, so you never feel like it's being disrupted by a bunch of contrived obstacles. You also get to use the shapes you've learned in refreshing ways, since there's complete freedom in how and where you place them. The only restriction is on how many shapes you can employ at one time. The game unfolds in chapters, not stages, and each chapter rolls into the next without stopping and announcing it, which kept me engaged. There were quite a few unexpected set pieces, too, that shifted the tone at each leg of the journey. Even the changes in color coupled with fantastic original music motivated me to keep pressing on, since I always felt like the character was getting that much closer to his goal. I won't spoil the highlights, but there are story elements that elevate Inked above other games of this make and model, and I think the developer managed to balance that subversion of expectation with the cohesive gameplay experience. In short, with its soft, dreamlike palette and a loving conceptual approach, Inked is every bit as enjoyable as it is lovely, and I'd recommend it for anyone who wants a calm, story-driven, easy-on-the-eyes experience that happens to include puzzles. I played the demo on Steam, but the full game is out if you want to give it a shot. My one warning is that the controls may take some getting used to if you don't typically play isometric games, but you can change the setup if you like. Number 2 Liebleed is a side-scrolling hack-and-slash, and oh my god, I could type a bunch of squealing gibberish on the screen right now, and it would pretty much sum up how much I love it so far. It's the kind of game you have to play to understand the praise, because its hook is in the way the game feels, thanks to the clever control scheme. I've said a million times that I'm mainly a console player, but I obviously play games on my PC, and while I come across a lot of indie projects that require a gamepad, it always seems like more of a programming limitation than a matter of improving player experience or otherwise capitalizing on a gamepad's design. Until now. Lieblade is a testament to why I love gamepads, as your attacks are tied primarily to the thumbstick, boiling the action down to a few satisfying flicks of the finger. Once you get the hang of it, it feels so natural and makes so much sense, you'll wonder why any game would ask you to push a button to attack. This isn't a button masher either. While you don't have to be an expert at it, and there's no steep learning curve, enemy placement and level design both reflect how you're meant to move and how your attack should be used for maximum effect. So if you think you can get by slashing away without direction or focus, you'll probably take damage and die. Enemy type matters. Timing matters. The direction of your attack definitely matters. Thankfully, the game is forgiving, and the stages are relatively short, so you won't find its frenetic appeal hampered by permadeath, slogging through areas you've already beaten a dozen times. Then again, wrecking enemies is so much fun, I can't say I'd mind having to go all the way back to the beginning. That said, Lieblade is still in development, so there aren't that many details to give, and I obviously can't say what will be added or changed going forward, but the demo makes a laudable showing, and I have nothing negative to note. The controls are buttery smooth, the feedback is amazing, and it's all propped up by snappy visuals and crisp sound design that make it kind of addictive. Now, I'm not sure what kind of resources the developer is working with, but I want to see the project gain some steam, because the foundation is there. The one area of improvement I see could be the quality of the graphics. It's a decent looking game, but with a bit more polish, it can be a fantastic looking game, with animations that are a little tighter. That's a minor point though, and certainly shouldn't come before the actual gameplay itself, which is, at this stage, pretty darn good.
Number three. I said at the start of the video that the games I'm featuring don't rely on a ton of intricate mechanics, just a few brilliant ones. And the alien sphere thing is the perfect example. It's a puzzle game where you observe a set of cubes and correctly answer a question about them to advance to the next stage. That's it. Yet, somewhat like Portal, though not really, there's more to the story when you look beyond the task. The farther you get, the deeper you go, you begin to assign value to the context of this cycle you're in, and a story takes shape that you can interpret as you see fit. Observing cubes may sound easy and dull, but this is yet another game where the control scheme enhances the experience, as your input influences the cube's behaviors, making them more difficult to discern. The levels are also procedurally generated, so memorizing the answers won't help you advance if you're sent back. It's all about relativity, perspective, and perception. If you like games where you have to be mindful about what you see, with a few admittedly frustrating challenges along the way, you'll love this. Your eyes may cross after a while, but you'll love this. I recorded myself playing from the beginning to around level 23 or so, when I noticed none of the video was being captured. And I wasn't going to play through it again since I always want my footage to be of my genuine first response, so I recorded the next few levels instead. It may not give you as clear a picture of how the levels progress, but it also doesn't give the game away. And that's the important thing. I'd rather you experience it for yourself than spoil it. And I don't know how many levels there are anyway, or if the game even has an end, so there could still be that much more we haven't seen ahead. While it seems perfectly suited to a solo experience, the game features local co-op for up to five players. I'm not sure how that even works, but I'm curious to find out if anyone out there gives it a go. Either way, the alien sphere thing is a deceptively simple diamond in the rough. It may be an acquired taste, but you'll never know if you don't taste it, so I highly recommend trying it out. You can download it now for free on Itch. Number 4 Tala is a point-and-click style game where you play as the titular Tala, a cute little forest spirit on a journey to save the town guardian. I had to include this one for its unique combination of real-world nature photography and traditional animation. It's like playing through an augmented reality, only it never feels stuttery and disjointed. Great care was taken in blending the beauty of the forest with Tala's miniature world, and it's an unexpected charm to look at. Beyond that, the gameplay is fairly standard for a point and click, though the puzzles are more straightforward, less tedious, and the game maintains its character throughout, so the tasks you complete fit the tone of the story without detracting from it. There are villagers you can interact with, and that's a treat since you get a sense of their lives and personalities in spite of nothing being said. Dialogue is pictorial, featuring thought bubbles and animations rather than words, which is a great way to make the game more inclusive for those who are too young to read or may not speak the language the game would otherwise be presented in. One of Tala's other strong points is that the environment is interactive well beyond actions required for puzzles, so the world feels dynamic and alive and really does offer an incentive to exploring and trying things out. Overall, point-and-click puzzle games are a dime a dozen, but they usually manage to deliver their own brand of special, and Tala is no exception. It's pretty adorable, and as a nature lover myself, I have to give it points for letting the real world shine. The game already met its Kickstarter goal and is well underway, so if you like where it's headed, check out the short demo and show the developer some love. Number 5 the Free Ones is a first-person adventure through an oppressed island landscape where you play as a prisoner banding together with other refugees to escape. It's a relatively fun ride swinging through fast-paced sequences over vast expanses with the freedom and momentum Spider-Man himself would potentially sign up for, albeit relatively linear in terms of progressing the story. I like that so many surfaces were fair game to grapple, whether above, below, or ahead, allowing me to enjoy the fluid movement without being stopped at every turn. I was really into the momentum, down to the anime-like streaks denoting speed. My main problem was misjudging angles and distance, since it's easy to over or undershoot and plummet to your death. I think I'd enjoy it more if I had a better PC, and if there were more dynamic events in the environment. The world felt barren, and I suspect there may not be much more to the core game than what I saw in this demo. And while the character models were fairly decent, their animations need a lot of work. The pacing of the demo was fine, but I haven't played the full game, which released back in July, so I don't know how in-depth the story is or how much time was invested in things like character development. What I do know is that a lot of people have labeled the Free Ones as an inferior clone of Valley and a story about my uncle, both which I played demos for and enjoyed. I can definitely see the parallels, and if I had to compare my experiences with each of them, I'd agree that the Free Ones fall short of achieving what the others did in some capacity, which is a shame considering they came out years prior. Then again, they all have some issues with story, length, controls, and the like depending on your taste, so don't take my word for it. 
Regardless of what came before it, the free ones demo is worth taking a look at to judge for yourself. I'll admit that it doesn't break any new ground, and with the full game clocking in at 2-3 hours, I can't say I'd press you to buy it, but I still wanted to feature it because I want to see more and better open world 3D platformers with these grappling mechanics, and that won't happen if indie developers who try their hand at the genre don't receive any feedback. So I say give the demo a shot and let me know what you think. Number 6 Story is a side-scrolling adventure that unravels like panels in a comic book, and besides the lovely artwork, the selling point is the ability to draw or remove gutters, in the line that represents the space between panels, to solve puzzles and progress to the next page. I'm going to keep this one short, because Story was a student project that the developers indicated they won't be working on any longer, so what you see is what you get if you play it. And I'll tell you right out of the gate that the controls are shite. Not because it's designed for azerty keyboards rather than QWERTY, though that's a point of frustration as well. It simply doesn't control as smoothly or quickly as it should, and the drawing mechanic works but requires some finesse. Still, the creative premise and tone of the execution are both worthy of pointing out, so I included it. It took me about an hour to finish, and you can play it right now on itch. Now before I go, here's a quick look at more bonus games than usual. And remember, some of the games I'm mentioning in this video are still works in progress, so what I'm showing you may not reflect the final release. Bonus Games Seven chambers cleared. Keep going. Just imagine the most tasty reward you can. We'll make it happen. By we, he means me. I'm not sure why this credit is being spread around. Didn't you once tell me that you were a championship baker?
That's it for this episode of Toast Bites. If you liked these games or hated them, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I'll be back soon with a peek at even more great games I played. But until then, see you on the plate.